I'm Paul Fleming McCullough, and this is my practical guide to help you improve your leadership skills and achieve the outstanding results others can't when you use the Be Helpful Keystone Habit. Now, this guide is split into three parts. Part one shares some ideas of leadership skills that you can improve and explains the power of Keystone Habits. Now, that's how you're going to take your new skills to the next level. Part 2 walks you through the one keystone habit that's going to make the biggest difference and provides the tools to help you use that keystone habit. And then part 3 is an example from my own career showing how I saved a struggling project by using the Be Helpful keystone habit. You ready? So let's jump straight in. Which leadership skills would you like to improve? Learn new skills through professional development. Strengthen your team's culture. Do more with fewer resources. Grow your organization through the current challenges. Stand out from your peers and achieve that promotion. Encourage greater collaboration across your organization. Or maybe maintain a work-life balance among the craziness that the world currently has to offer. Now, what goals would you add or remove from the list? Are there any pointers from your last performance review that you can work on and strengthen? So my favorite trick to help with self-awareness is to look at the people that I admire and those that, well, not so much. And I ask myself, what traits do I share with each person? What do I need to do more of and what do I need to do less of or stop completely? What results can you expect when you develop your leadership skills? I mean, the benefits you can achieve are as broad and diverse as the goals that inspire them. But at a base level, when you improve your leadership skills, you can expect to increase results, grow trust, and build relationships. At the same time, you reduce overruns, remove waste, and resolve frustrations. And so the end result is a burgeoning personal reputation because you are able to deliver an other go-to person who makes a difference. So here are some of the benefits for myself and those around me as I have become a better leader. So customers trust me and want to work with me again and, and again. My team listens to my advice and leadership. I influence decisions, resulting in better outcomes. And I deliver the outstanding results that others can't. Now, go back to your list of leadership goals from earlier. What results and advantages will you create when you achieve your goals? Goals often fail because of a poor system. So in his book, Atomic Habits, James Clear highlights the reason that most people don't reach the goals they're aiming for. They don't have a system in place to help them get there. So consider the infamous bridge to nowhere, right? So imagine we're surveying a new route, and part of the journey takes us through a forest and over a river. So surveyors, project managers, and the client, right, everybody signed off on a plan. Now the plan documents sections of the route, obstacles the construction team will face, and how to solve them. But if we don't have the right system, we run the risk of working on the wrong items at the wrong time and starting in the wrong place. Which leaves us with the potential for a bridge in the middle of nowhere that doesn't connect to anything or take us anywhere. Keystone habits, the secret source that makes your improvement system work. So James Clear mentions two ways to turn your goals into repeatable habits and successful outcomes. You make the habits easy to do and you make small changes consistently. And this is where developing a keystone habit makes the difference. Charles Duhigg, author of The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business, defines keystone habits as small changes or habits that people introduce into their routines that unintentionally carry over into other aspects of their lives. An example of a keystone habit, making good decisions. So we make thousands of decisions every day, 35,000 according to some internet sources, some good, some bad. So for example, right, looking both ways before crossing the street, leaving five minutes earlier than normal for that important meeting, choosing to go for a swim even though there may be sharks in the water, leaving the door to the route to your uh, recording room open so the dogs can come in with their toy. Not the smartest decision I've made today. Let's say making good decisions is one of our keystone habits. What other behaviours of ours are affected? So to make a good decision, it helps to be informed, be balanced in our emotional state, and prepared for what happens next. 
So to become informed, we start with an open mind and we get a full range of opinions by talking with people who are both for and against our decision. So we take the time to research our options. Our documentation is clear, making it easy to understand the differences. Now, being thoughtful of our actions and their impacts to those around us are important parts to creating a sense of balance. So when we pause and think about our actions, we're more likely to make a good decision. But when we decide in haste or a heightened state, we increase our chances of ignoring vital information or downplaying risk, leading to bad decisions. So the third element in our list of behaviors for good decisions is to execute on our plan once we've made our choice, right? Because we need to know what to do so that we can take advantage of our informed good decision. We also need a backup plan that we can quickly and smoothly move to if things don't go as expected. So you can see how with one keystone habit, making good decisions, we're able to improve leadership skills in all sorts of different areas. Self-awareness, building relationships, communications, critical thinking, documentation and planning, right, to name a few. And by making small, easy changes in more than one place, the result is a snowball effect spanning the broader range of our skills and goals, right? The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So developing a keystone habit is key to your ability to successfully transform your leadership goals into repeatable benefits and advantages. The power of a keystone habit goes beyond personal growth. So keystone habits work for personal development, but are they as effective for strategic and organizational goals? Well, the short answer is yes. So Charles Duhigg provides an excellent example of the power of a keystone habit. The international company Alcoa improved its corporate culture, its communication systems, performance, quality, and profitability by focusing on one keystone habit, safety in the workplace. Now, a keystone habit is one that positively impacts everything else you do. So think about a pond with a calm surface. What happens when you skip a stone across the surface? How far do the ripples spread? How many interse intersect and impact each other? Now imagine yourself as someone who's helpful, trustworthy, gets things done, is a pleasure to work for. You are someone who makes a real difference to those around them. So just like the ripples on a pond when you skip the stone, how far can your influence spread? How many people can you impact and change for the better? What can your organization achieve when you do this? Improve leadership skills, a helpful recap. So far, you've created the list of leadership skills that you want to improve and the resulting advantages you expect to gain. You've also learned how developing a keystone habit gives you the mechanism to be able to grow and improve. So now let's build your winning system with two simple steps. Number one, we're going to identify that one keystone habit that makes the difference. And number two, we're going to utilize two problem-solving questions to help you develop the behaviors that will become the Be Helpful Keystone Habit.